All right, so let's go one one more time back to the argument from religious experience. Um, you may some of you may have watched the 150 arguments from Crabshaw and Christianity. There's one there that I like in particular. It's Alston's argument from religious experience is very similar to mine, or something I've been trying to present on this channel a lot. Um, premise one is my senses are generally reliable. Now a lot of people will object to that right off the bat, but you shouldn't. Generally speaking, our senses evidence the world to us as it actually occurs. I'm not talking about the, the exceptions, optical illusions, things like that. So put it this way. If Matt Dillahunty, Seth Andrews, and Aaron Ra were in Pine Creek Doug, <laughs> Pine Creek Doug, all of them are in an apartment with me right now, okay, we'd be we'd be evidencing we'd be basically in almost identical lockstep agreement on the sensory information available to all five of us. I'd say, do, what do you see right there? Do you see a coat rack? They go, yes, we see a coat rack. I go, what do you see wandering around the apartment? Do you see a sweet little kitty cat? They go, yes, we see a sweet little kitty cat. Um, a sound outside, a car drives by. Did you hear that car drive by? Yes, we heard that car drive by. So our senses would be identical to each other. The sensory information we would be receiving from the world at large would be absolutely identical to each other. The times where there are discrepancies that usually can be accounted for. An individual person, you're drunk, you're high, you didn't get enough sleep. You know, and those things where, where atheists are usually talking about, say you see a, a murder, um, you know, a hundred people will be an eyewitness to a murder and they'll get all the details wrong. I'm not talking about the, the precise details. I'm just talking roughly speaking. All a hundred of, you know, someone will say, I saw someone with blonde hair. Some will say it was a woman with glasses. Some will say, you know, it was a, it was a man with black hair. They'll get all the details wrong. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking, 100 out of 100 would say we saw the, the murder, period. Yes, they'd get all the details wrong, and they'd remember it wrong, but I'm not talking about really precise, you know, experiential claims. I'm talking about a, a general experiential claim that's really easy to perceive. Now, as I've pointed out time and time again, I'm talking about an experiential claim, not a faith claim. So, Matt Dillahunty, Seth Andrews, um, who they say, Pine Creek, Doug, and myself, would all perceive the world almost identical to each other. There'd be almost no discrepancies between our sensory information. We'd all see the same things in the apartment, we'd all hear the same sounds, and we can account for everything. Everyone understands that, right? Now, in my apartment right now, as we speak, there's a bottle of lavender oil. I'm about to make an experiential claim about the lavender oil, not a faith claim, so you see the difference. Why is there a bottle of lavender oil? Because I keep it by my bed. It helps me sleep at night. Why does it help me sleep at night? Because I smell it and it makes me feel tired. That is an experiential claim. That is not a fake claim. Is that contingent on me believing anything about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? No. Is that contingent on me believing anything about the historical reliability of the Gospels? No. It's an experiential claim. Do you see the difference now? Do you see how fundamental and basic this actually is? I'm making an experiential claim. I smell this particular brand of lavender oil. It makes me feel tired. So the street epistemologists, most likely Pond Creek, but it could be a bunch, come up to me and say, you know, how do you know? I just told you how I knew. I smell it. It makes me feel tired. Could you be wrong? No. <laughs> I just told you an experiential claim. I smell this particular brand of lavender oil. It makes me feel tired, so it helps me sleep. It's not contingent on anything under the sun. The, the, an experiential claim stands or falls based on the integrity of my actual experience, my own experience. So, there's, there is a, what is known as phenomenal conservatism. Some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. It says, I am rationally justified to believe in that which seems true to me, absent defeaters. Okay. Listen, think carefully if you're an atheist, because you're already trying to reach for a defeater. There is no such thing as a defeater for my individual experience. I know you don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, Craig. There's got to be. Why? Because God does this. Could you be wrong? Could you be wrong? Could you be wrong? Could you be wrong, Craig? No, I can't be wrong. Here's the experiential claim related to a Holy Spirit encounter. I go into my prayer closet. I have a powerful, subjective, internal experience, 100% real to me, 
that I honestly believe is God. That is an identical type of claim, an experiential claim, to my claim about lavender oil. Listen again to the claim about lavender oil. I smell lavender oil, it makes me feel tired. Could you be wrong? No. Think about the lavender oil claim. Just the lavender oil claim. Isolate that in your mind and think about what it means to be an experiential claim. So you stop using fake defeaters. There's a Hindu somewhere, Craig, and you don't believe in his God. Therefore, the lavender oil doesn't make you feel tired when you smell it. You're wrong. <laughs> That's the logic. I know it doesn't seem like the logic because you misapply theological considerations to an experiential claim. That's the pretzel logic that almost every atheist says to me and thinks is a slam dunk. Listen again to, what, to, to phenomenal conservatism. I am completely rationally justified to believe that which seems right to me, seems true to me, absent defeaters. The defeater can't be, you've got some cockamamie idea about the, 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 there's, so the Old Testament endorses slavery, Craig, that's a defeater for your religious experience. You see how illogical that is? Do you see how illogical that is? One is not logically contingent upon the other at all. You can't be smelling lavender oil, Craig. It can't make you tired like you say. Why? Because the Old Testament endorses slavery. Don't you know that? Didn't you get the memo? <laughs> Moses might not have even existed, Craig. Okay? Therefore, when you smell the lavender oil, you're not really feeling tired. It's got to be your imagination. Even if it were, let's just say, for argument's sake, my imagination. So? Still has the same effect. Now, I'm going to go on videos from time to come to try and prove the difference between purely a product of my imagination and something that has standalone ontology out there in the real world. It's pretty easy to do. Um, I'll go into in videos to come. Why? Because a product of my imagination can only be communicated to people if I sit in my prayer closet and I just imagine something about Thor. I can only communicate that to the outside world one of two ways. I can either tell you about it or write it down. Outside of that, you would have no epistemic access to my imagination at all. Correct? Correct. Now, getting back to the issue at hand. Well, that's very important information. It will lead to a series of proofs that I can literally demonstrate to you that this isn't solely my imagination. But getting back to the issue at hand. So a religious experience, as the type I am claiming, is an experiential claim, not a faith claim. It doesn't matter if there are Hindus who believe something about, or, or Muslims who believe something about Allah that I don't believe. It's irrelevant. Why? Because my... my Claim stands or falls based on the integrity of its own occurrence, based on the actuality of its own occurrence. That's why I keep saying science is on my side. Why? Because science doesn't have a dog in the fight. Unlike atheists, they aren't going to just listen to me so they can try and find a way to undermine what I'm saying. That's what atheists routinely do. Let me find a way to try and debunk, dismiss, discredit you. So they bring up three fake defeaters for my authentic religious experience. Could you be wrong? No, it's an experiential claim. I'm telling you the actual truth of my own experience. That doesn't necessarily mean it's God, but I cannot be wrong about what I'm experiencing. That is an illogical idea. Could you be wrong that lavender oil makes you feel tired? No, I cannot. It's what it legitimately makes me feel. If you wanted to find out if my, my claim about lavender oil was true, the only thing you could access is, is it true for you? You'd have to go buy that particular brand of lavender oil and try it out for yourself. Why that particular brand? Because I've explained many times in my videos, qualia is content specific. If I say this particular type of Holy Spirit encounter religious experience makes me feel this particular way, and from that I honestly feel to, it honestly feels to me like God, I'm talking about that experience and that experience alone. I am not talking about any old religion on religious experience under the sun. There's a wide variety of them that don't all produce the same effects or the same results. This is why I keep saying science is on my side. One day science will have this mapped out clearly. The different types of religious experiences out there, what's being claimed and what's being asserted. They're not all claiming the same thing. That's where you think that all this irrational, irrationality and cacophony comes from when it's actually perfectly reasonable, perfectly rational, pretty straightforward. Isolate the experience and just think about it as an experiential claim. If you wanted to find out if my claim about lavender oil was true, 
you take that particular brand of lavender oil, you go buy it in the store, try it out for yourself, and go, this doesn't work for me. I don't feel tired. Craig's wrong. Or this doesn't work. This does work for me. Craig's right. I feel tired too. That's it. It's the only thing that you could do to test my claim. Try it out for yourself. Do you understand? It's the same idea with the religious experience claim. It's an experiential claim, not a faith claim. The only reason why I, I, why it's attached to Christianity in my mind is the first place I experienced what they call a Holy Spirit encounter experience was in a Christian church, a Christian environment. Is it somewhat similar to other types of experiential claims out there? Yes, yeah, somewhat. Somewhat similar to the, to the Hindus. It's somewhat similar. I noticed that when I started listening to them, that they're claim, they, what they're claiming is a little bit more, it's more along the same lines than most other people, but it's a lot more, a lot more you have to put a lot more work in to find out if, the, if what they're telling you rings true. You've got to learn a series of chants and you have to practice it over a series of years. That's what they said. And then they'll say that you will, you know, acquire this quality known as saintliness. These are all, these are all, you know, these are all epistemic claims available for empirical investigation on their end too. That's what I was trying to say when Dr. Resnick was debating Matt Dillahunty. He was making claims that were pretty straightforward. And Matt Dillahunty pretended like they didn't and pretended they were nonsensical. And I'm listening as a Christian, got no dog in his Sky Fairy fight. I don't care if he proves to Matt Dillahunty his particular Sky Fairy, but I can listen to plain English and I can decide for, <laughs> can decide for myself, yeah, that makes complete sense because it made complete sense. And Matt Dillahunty was bending over backwards to try and pretend like it didn't. You've got to ask yourself at some point, why are people doing that? Why do atheists have such a studious dog in the fight? Why do you have such an agenda when it comes to religious experiences? Why do you not want me to be right? Because it's really obvious what happens. I'm making a pretty straightforward claim. There's nothing to argue with. If I said to you, you said I have trouble sleeping, I said to you, try some lavender oil, this brand really helps me sleep, would you look for defeaters for that? No, of course not. You take me on my word, you go, yeah, okay, maybe I'll try it. If you wanted to sleep badly enough, you'd give it a shot. You certainly wouldn't go, I don't know, Craig, <laughs> you know, there's a guy that, there's claims like that all over the world, Craig, and there's, a, there's Jesus appearing in a burrito to somebody right now as you speak, so I don't think your, your experience with lavender oil could be true. That's how you act when I bring up a religious experience claim. Like it's the most outlandish, you know, lunatic thing you've ever heard in your entire life. That's on you. That's not on me. That's on you. <laughs> not on me at all. I'm making a pretty straightforward, pretty simple claim. You go participate in these particular types of rituals that I talk about in my Christian church. If I put you smack dab in the middle of that church and you participated for north of 20 minutes in those, that worship service, you wouldn't necessarily become a Christian, raise your hand and go, Jesus saved me. You know, I want to become a Christian at the end of it. But you'd certainly stop doubting me and you'd have a lot more respect for my basic integrity and my basic, you know, sensory apparatus. Because well, I perfectly understand why Craig thinks this is legit. Why? Because it does feel like God. <laughs> it really does feel like God. And you walk away and try and reconcile to the worldview. I swear to God, that's exactly what you do. You wouldn't just dismiss it. Why? Because it would 100% feel to you like God too in the moment. You know exactly what Christians were talking about when they say, I can feel the peace of God which passeth all understanding when I go into that strong place of prayer. You know exactly what they mean past that point. Experientially. Not, I know what you mean logically and rationally. Experientially. There's a really big difference between experience and experience and listening to somebody talk about it. You understand that, right? You guys aren't so far disconnected from reality that you don't understand that there's a really big difference between me explaining Beethoven's symphony to you and how it literally is going to make zero sense to you until you put the headphones on for yourself and try it out and listen. Oh, that's what he meant. You have to hear for yourself what it sounds like. You have to try for yourself what the qualia actually experience is. That's the only way you can tell if I'm telling you the truth. Outside of that, you don't care what's true. You can't dismiss... What I tell you, if I listen to Beethoven's symphony and I come back with experiential claims about it, you know, the second movement is really going to blow your mind because it's really impressive when the, when the violin kicks in with the refrain. There is no such thing as a defeater for that. 
Zero such thing as a defeater for that. The best case scenario, the best you could offer me is that was I tried it and that wasn't true for me. All right, fine, fair enough. Then stay an atheist, go eat your babies, babies in peace and feel proud of yourself. Why? You conquered, you conquered reality. <laughs> I conquered reality. I was so close-minded that something was there available for me to experience, but I was so resolute in my ideology that I just refused to experience it the way Craig says it could be experienced, and I stay firm in my non-belief. Good for you. Hope you're proud of yourself. Why? Because that's irrational to the bone. Irrational to the bone. Irony, isn't it? <laughs> I swear to God, that's irrational to the core. It's irrational to the bone. And that irrationality rears its head every single time I try to bring this up in real time and try to really converse about this with an actual human being if they happen to be an atheist. That's what comes up. Let me try, let me bend over backwards and try to prove you wrong. Irrational response. Irrational response. Triggered out, weird response. I don't know what you think happens if you just, you know, experience God. I don't know what sky you think falls or what happens to the rest of your worldview or what mountains collapse upon you if a Christian turns out to have some, you know, slight version of the truth. But that's how I get fought, tooth and nail. And I get fought tooth and nail to not even be able to process the information correctly or accurately. That's why I don't even bother calling up something like the atheist experience. Why? They won't even let me get the words out properly. They won't. I've seen them do it a thousand times. I don't need to be in the middle of that experience. They won't let me articulate it properly. It's what happened with Pine Creek Dog. He wouldn't let me tell him my truth the way it needed to be articulated. He would not allow me to do it in his presence. That's what was going on. And people said, I got defensive. I didn't. If you're going to ask me about something that's deeply, let me just pull you in right now. This is deeply important to me. I can't make this any clearer. This is outside of my relationship with my wife and my cat. This is the most important thing in my life to me, by far. By far. Nothing else is even on the map. So if you ask me about it, you know, I'm going to start trying to tell you the truth. If you're just going to jerk my chain and play games with me, don't you dare ask me again. Don't. If you don't want to know the truth according to me, don't ask. But if you ask me, and I, and I say, I said the truth according to me, and one time, I, atheists acted again like the world fell apart. Truth according to you, truth isn't something that's just according to you. The truth according to me is the only truth I could ever tell you, guys. Get a clue. It's the only truth I could ever tell you. I don't know the solid, objectively verifiable truth about all things considered. I really don't, neither do you. Reality check. That's why a lot of these conversations are just plain stupid. Because you are in, in you know, I think most Christians should do what I do and take it down to deeply personal. Give them real information from your real life that's deeply personal to you. See if that moves the needle. Because the arguments usually don't. They don't. Just be realistic. You know, if I, if I, I think some of the arguments get you 80% over the finish line, you know, if I find one that gets you over the finish line, I'm working on something myself, by the way, then I'll bring them out, to, bring them out in the cold light of day and I'll start using them. But they don't really get you over the finish line. They don't technically prove anything. There's standalone, you know, interesting pro, uh, propositions inside of them that reflect the truth or are true or compelling evidence kind of, sort of, for somebody who's willing to cooperate, but they don't get you over the finish line. I think you'd be a lot more successful doing what I do. Think about the parts of Christianity that are the most meaningful and true for you, and go from there. I don't know, just a suggestion, you don't have to do it. It's not, that's, what I, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's not about me if you do it or not. That's what, I think that, that's what I think will win the day. But, it's up to you. You know, if you're an atheist, uh... Let me see. I'm probably running out of time. Yeah, I'm rambling a little, but did I cover the bases about the experiential claim? Are we all clear on this? I'll go over in videos to come. It's an experiential claim. It's not a faith claim. There is no such thing as a defeater for my personal experience outside of my personal experience. It's an irrational idea. Yeah, it's possible I'm imagining that, that, that you know, when I go into the, my prayer closet, there is no Holy Spirit and I'm ginning it up in my mind. That's entirely possible. But I will show you why that's really improbable. And it, it's entirely possible that I'm imagining also when I smell lavender, I start to feel tired. But it happens every single solitary time, bar none. Just like my experiential claims about the Holy Spirit encounter. Every time I put on that worship mu music, bar none. 
Within five minutes, I feel the exact same thing. I feel what the Christians call the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Within five minutes, no exceptions. Which means I can generate those experiences at will. Which means they are easily, readily available to me as the lavender oil on my nightstand. I can smell it and feel tired. It happens without exception. It's not a faith claim. How positive am I that I'm going to feel that, to experience that, that peace of God which passeth all understanding? 100% positive. It's as, re I said, it's as real to me as steam in the shower. It's as readily available to me as the, night, the lavender oil on my nightstand. It's as much a part of my daily routine as the lavender oil on my nightstand and my morning coffee. Hello? It's as much a part of my regular routine as those things. It's part of my daily, everyday life, constant in my life. Why do you think I'm so chillax all the time? We don't find you all that chillax, Craig. You're shouting at the sun all the time. I'm not shouting at the sun. You're shouting at the sun all the time. You don't see all that chillax. Well, I'm really chillax. <laughs> you don't see me. You shout at the sun every single day. I'm not technically shouting, and I'm not technically shouting at the sun. So it's as much as part of my daily life as my morning coffee. And I was doing it for 10 or 15 years, long before I ever met an atheist. Long before anybody decided to try to cast doubt on it. Here, let me cast doubt on something you do every single day of your life. It's a ludicrous idea. Let me show you why coffee doesn't actually wake you up in the morning, Craig. Let me demonstrate it to you by asking you some weird street epistemology questions. Let me get in your brain and mentally walk you away from the thing you've experienced every single day of your life for years. You have that kind of boogeyman power <laughs> that you're the most manipulative person that ever walked the face of the earth. You know, I don't know what street epistemologists will legitimately do when they come upon people with, with like actual really strong reason for the thing they believe. But it's as strong a reason for the thing I believe as the fact that I believe that lavender oil makes me feel tired and that coffee makes me feel alert in the morning. It's an experiential claim. There is zero you can do with it. Either try it yourself or go away because you don't care what's true. Try it yourself or grow up or go home. That's it. Those are your options. You don't have to believe me, but if you care what's true, you should try it. And like I said, so as soon as I figure out how to translate that, the experience into real time on my, my, my beautiful little YouTube channel. No, some people my, my awesome little YouTube, my wonderful little YouTube channel. I'll figure out, uh, you know. That's the thing I say to my wife. What do I say to my wife all the time? You know, you should be more respectful to your beautiful husband. She goes, ew, ew, ew. <laughs> Sorry, God, that's what you said. Ew, ew, ew. Um, so, that's it. Those are the facts, Jack. Take, read them and weep, basically. <laughs> Take them or leave them, because they ain't changing. There's no such thing as a defeater outside of my experience. It stands or falls based on the integrity of its actual occurrence. I'm either telling you the truth or I'm lying. That's a possibility. I promise you, on pain of death, I'm telling you the truth. And I'm either perceiving something that's really powerful and real to me, which you all believe. So I'm either wet look crazy and crazier than crazy, like the, the most <laughs> triggered out lunatic that ever walked the face of this earth, or I'm telling you the God's honest truth and I'm actually experiencing something that can be perceived by almost everybody listening to me. I swear to God, I'm perceiving something that can be perceived by almost everybody listening to. You might not decide it's God, but you'll be able to feel it. I promise you that. I promise you that on pain of death. Why? Because it ain't that complicated. It ain't that hard to do. It'll be easy. Or once I figure out how to translate it into YouTube, it should be easy. Anyways, I guess that's enough for now. That is all for now, kids. Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.